Dan Mullen produced the winningest first 35 games in Florida school history and claimed the East Division in 2020. Back in May, Mullen signed a three-year extension, which made him the third highest paid head coach in the SEC. Going into the season, the Gators looked primed for another strong season, fighting for the SEC East and a possible spot in the college football playoffs. They came into the season ranked 13th in the AP poll and climbed as high as number 10. They outgained Alabama 440 yards to 331 yards in a 31-29 loss and then dominated Tennessee to end the month of September 3-1 and, and looked ready to have another 9-10 win season. Then, everything went wrong. The Gators began to unravel after a penalty-plagued 20-13 loss at Kentucky, and going into their game against LSU, they were sitting at 4-2 and, and it looked like they could win in a blowout. The Tigers were preparing to fire head coach Ed Odron, and the team was depleted. The Gators were 12.5 point favorites, but instead, they let Tyron Davis Price run for 287 yards and 3 touchdowns, losing 49-42. They licked their wounds going into the bye week and prepared to take on the Georgia Bulldogs, who had entered the game ranked number 1 in the land. The game was close for most of the first half. The Bulldogs were only up 3-0 before scoring a touchdown with 2.16 left in the second quarter to make it 10-0. Georgia went into halftime, up 24-0. After the game, the cracks for Mullen started to form. Kirby Smart talked passionately about recruiting, while Mullen said he wanted to wait until after the season to talk about it, acting like it was more of a chore. Still, Scott Strickland and Florida looked like they were still in support of their head coach. We were going out of the month of November, and spooky season was supposed to be over. They had four games against middling teams, and it looked like Mullen could salvage the season and finish 8-4. The Gators had yet to wake up from their nightmare. They went into their game at South Carolina as 20.5 point favorites and lost 40-17. One Gator staffer called it the worst loss in program history. As a side effect of the blowout, Mullen's timeline for making offseason changes was sped up. On Sunday, November 7th, less than 12 hours after the team flew home from South Carolina, he met with coaches and graduate assistants to reveal that defensive coordinator Todd Grantham and offensive line coach John Hevesy were being let go immediately. Mullen planned to inform his players at Monday's regular scheduled 8 a.m. team meeting and was disappointed when the news leaked out Sunday evening. They were two of Mullen's most trusted lieutenants, with Grantham being with Mullen for five years dating back to 2017 at Mississippi State. Mullen had known Hevesy since 2001 when they were both assistants at Bowling Green under Urban Meyer. They abruptly turned around a MAC program that had suffered six consecutive losing seasons, went 22-2 at Utah, won two national championships at Florida, and pr produced eight bowl games and a number one ranking across nine years in Starkville. Then returned to Florida for a second tenure and began with three New Year's Six Bowls. Things were getting bad and they were only about to get much worse. Mullen denied that these staffing changes were because of Strickland, saying, The head coach has to do what I feel is best for the Florida Gators, and that comes above it all. It was obviously a really tough decision to make. It was something that was weighing on me. The staff would be shorthanded the final three regular season games and aim to retool for the 2022 season. Things would only get much worse as they trailed Sanford, an FCS program, by 14 late in the first half. They would go on to win 70-52, but the question was not if Florida would fire Mullen, it began to become when. The nail in the coffin would come this past weekend when the Gators would fall to Missouri 24-23 in overtime, a game they entered as 9-point favorites. Minutes after the Missouri loss dropped Florida's record to 5-6, Mullen reiterated his desire to remain coach, rebuild a winning culture, and make a final push for the 2022 recruiting class. I love being the coach of the Gators, I mean, we're out there trying. We're giving it everything that we have every single week. We go in there, try to coach our guys up, try to put them in a position, try to motivate them. One Florida source told The Athletic, Our biggest issue is undisciplined play. That is a sign of systematic failure. To think that the issue is as simple as a new defensive coordinator is a little naive. Mullen was not recruiting at a high level, more so not putting in a full effort. With one source telling The Athletic, When Dan turns it on recruiting, he has charisma and he's engaged. With him, it's not a can't-do issue. It's a want-to issue. During this time period, Miami and Florida State were both down, and the Gators had a wide-open opportunity to take over the state of Florida, but failed to. Strickland wondered whether he should bring in a GM-style leader from the NFL to help acquire talent and motivate Mullen to be more aggressive in recruiting. The question that came out was whether Mullen would listen. I think we got our answer with the firing. Next spring, 
Florida will open up a brand new $85 million football facility that has a beam with Mullen's signature. Now, Florida will be looking for a brand new head coach, their fourth in eight years, and Mullen will be looking for a new job. So what is next for Mullen? Many expect him to take an NFL job, whether that's an offensive coordinator or quarterback coach position. The main issue with that is whether the NFL will accept some of his wacky antics. Many believe it's unlikely for him to return to the college game. Others believe that Mullen should take a year or two off in coaching and take a TV gig somewhere. By doing this, it would allow him to endear himself to the public again and show a side of himself we haven't seen. As Josh Pate said on Late Kick last night, he needs to go away for a little bit and learn a new hold. In terms of a wrestling metaphor, when the crowd stales on a wrestler. What's next for Florida? They need to find a head coach who is going to recruit hard. Florida State and Miami have been down as a program the past few years, and the Gators have not taken advantage of it. Those two programs are not going to be down for forever, and UCF and USF are joining the Big 12, becoming Power 5 programs in a few years. The Gators need to hire someone who will take a stranglehold of the state of Florida in recruiting now. But what do you think went wrong for Dan Mullen in Florida, and who should they hire next? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.